Discover the Arts is brought to you by Nevada Dairymen and Dairy Council of Nevada and Estelle J. Kelsey Foundation. Hi everyone! I'm so excited we get to do stage makeup today! My name is Janet Lazarus. I'm the producing artistic director of Sierra School of Performing Arts. And I am so excited that you're going to learn some stage makeup techniques today. Today, Now, these are not makeup techniques for every day on the street, going to a party, going to a wedding. No, these are stage makeup techniques for the theater, as we say. Okay. So, uh, it's going to be a little different than what you might be used to. So, pay close attention. I'm going to be doing a little teaching and a little demonstrating, and I have a wonderful model here today, which I will introduce you to in just a moment. Her name is Rosie, and she's going to be my model so I can show you two different techniques today. The first is going to be old age makeup, because I'm guessing that if you're watching, you are not old. But we're gonna make Rosie old today with a little bit of makeup. And after that, we're going to do some animal makeup. I've chosen to do a lion because that's my favorite animal. So I hope you will enjoy it. And the first thing I want to show you is what are the tools of stage makeup? I brought my handy dandy makeup kit with me today. Okay. Now you don't have to have anything this elaborate, but as you go through your career in the theater, you will be gathering uh, makeup and tools. So at some point you're going to want to put it in all in one place in some container that's easy to carry with you. So I'm going to just show you a little bit of my makeup kit. And these are all theatrical makeup supplies. Okay. These aren't what you get at Walmart. Okay. These are made mostly by a company by the name of Ben Nye, but there are several different make theatrical makeup companies that are well uh, uh, respected. So first of all, makeup is about painting the face to change it in some way so you look more like the character you are playing or to enhance the look of the face so the audience far away can make out the features of the face. So that would be for emphasizing the features of the face and or for changing the face to look like the character. So those are the two functions of makeup. In order to do that, we need paint, right? Now artists work with highlights and shadows, color and line, those four basic elements. We're gonna be doing the same thing. Some of the paint we use is cream paint because it's going on a face and you want to be able to manipulate it either with a sponge or with uh, your fingers, okay, or with a brush. One moment, please. This is what a basic makeup kit looks like from Ben I. And in it, the most important thing are sponges. I'm going to show you what a sponge looks like and we're going to use that on Rosie's face. This is a sponge and this is really good for being able to apply makeup, okay? I have a powder puff and you're going to see how that comes in handy in a second. Brushes, brushes, all kinds of brushes, all kinds of brushes, all kinds of shapes and sizes of brushes. We're going to get to that in a second. Skinny and thick. Okay. We have, like I said, we have cream makeup. This is called foundation. And this is kind of gooey, creamy, right? So it goes on the face really well. And we're going to take a look at that. Um, I have lots of shades of makeup, all kinds of shades. Why do I have all kinds of shades of makeup? Because we come in all different shades, don't we, we human beings? We are dark, light, olive, fair. We come in all kinds of shades. So there's all kinds of shades of makeup. We are working with shadows and highlights. And I'm going to explain that in a second. But for highlights and shadows, we've got dark and light makeup. So this 
is called character shadow and you can see it's really dark brown and that's going to come in handy especially with our old age makeup but to complement that we need highlights and this is called ultralight okay there are many shades of highlight i like to use ultralight so this gives us a nice soft whiteness not pure white because then we would look like a clown we don't want to look like a clown unless we are trying to look like a clown okay so I'm going to move along. You get the idea. There's lots of tools here. Um, one more thing I want to mention is powder. When you finish painting the face, you need to set it because we're going to be working as actors under bright lights. And the reason why we need special makeup is so that the makeup stays where it is and stays where it is for several hours because most plays take several hours to complete, right? So after we paint the face, we set it with powder, we apply the powder, and then we brush off the excess, and that will set it so it stays put, okay? So I'm gonna ask my model, Rosie, to please come on over, and we're gonna get started on some age makeup. Come on over, Rosie. So now that we have our trusty model here, I wanna go through some things that our model or your your makeup person would be doing uh, to prepare for getting makeup. First, we want to start with a completely clean face, and Rosie has already done that. Uh, next, we want to make sure the, the hair is off the face, and you can do that in many ways, but I like to use what we call a wig cap. This would normally go underneath uh, a wig, but this is really great for holding the hair close to the head and off the face and she's going to go ahead and tuck that all in and then I'm going to make sure it's all off her face yep it's a lovely look tell me if I'm hurting you nope okay so now we've got a face to work on now what's the difference between painting as an artist and painting as a stage makeup artist an artist works with a flat canvas. We're working with a not flat canvas, okay? So, as you can see, we have bones we're working with. This is very important because when we want to emphasize the features of the face, we're talking about emphasizing the bones of the face, the depressions, where it sinks in and where it protrudes. Now, if you were to shine a light here, if this was the sun or a light, Parts of Rosie's face would be catching the light, and parts of her face would be in shadow. That's what we want to emphasize. That's what we're working with. Where are the shadows? Where are the lights? Where are the highlights? Okay, so I'm going to be talking a lot about that. I'm going to be highlighting the parts of the face that would catch the light or shine lighter in the light, and I'm gonna be adding shadow to the parts of the face that would be in shadow. So therefore, we're really emphasizing the features of the face. And that's what it's all about with age makeup. Also, we're gonna be adding some things that happen to the face with age. We get deeper recesses, deeper shadows. Uh, the, 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 the face sinks in, okay? It drops, it droops, so we're gonna create jowls, we're gonna create wrinkles, we're gonna create uh, uh, folds in the face, so watch how we do that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a foundation, and I've chosen uh, something called Ultra Beige. This is a very light foundation, and we're gonna apply this all over the face. won't talk while it's time lapse. And you want to apply a really even coat. And you can do this with your fingers. You can do this with a brush. I like to use a sponge. You can even go down onto the neck. This also helps us even out any discolorations or irregularities in the skin. Of course, Rosie doesn't have any, 
but very often you're working with uh, an actor that does have inconsistencies in the complexion, whether they're um, blemishes or sunspots or what have you. Okay, good. We want to hit all areas of what we're calling is the mask. This is the mask. Good. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for, and I'm also going to use a, a sponge for this, although you can use a brush. I'm going to start with the shadows of the face. Now, I want you to take a really good look at Rosie's face. And can you tell where the shadows would be? Take a look at your own face and feel around and feel where the bones protrude and feel where the bones go in. And that's how you find your shadows and your highlights. So if you will touch your own face right now, you can feel that the cheekbones are really prominent, right? They really kind of jut out at you. And right under the cheekbone is like a depression. It's, it goes in. So we want to catch that depression as a shadow. So watch how we do that. Right under the cheekbone. There we go. We're going to do a deep brown line. We're going to blend it later. First, I want to find those places on the face that would be shadow. OK, what's another place that would be a shadow? Under the chin. Where else? The sides of the nose. Under the eyebrow is another place. Now I'm just doing a rough Shadowing right now, we're going to blend all of this in a second to make it look more natural. Right here at your temples, it goes in. Feel that. We're going to add shadow to that area as well. Let's see, what am I forgetting? We're going to do lines here, but I'm not going to do that with the sponge. But right here, there's a fold. There's like a crease. And we're going to really deepen that. But we'll use our brush. I'm just going to add, there's a little bit of a depression in the forehead here. It's hard to see, but it's there. And we're going to add a little bit of shadow there as well. Okay, now we're going to start to blend. And for this, I'm going to use a brush or my fingers. We'll see. See, now it's starting to look a little bit more like a shadow and not just a kind of glob of brown. Now for the under, under the chin, I'm going to go back to my sponge. And if we get too much, we can always go back and add the cream foundation again. Up 
I'm not hurting you. All good. Good, now I'm gonna blend the shadow on the nose. And then Hey, okay, open. Oh, you're starting to get old. Now we're going to add some finer lines, which is really fun. Now, if you want to know where to do this, you can look on your own face and see where the crease is. Probably you don't have much of a crease yet, but you will. So I'm going to look for Rosie's crease. She's just beginning to have a crease here. I know it happens to the best of us. And I'm going to make a line. It's hard to find your crease. That won't always be the case. Case. Okay, so that's one. That's a really important one. Another one is, can I have you look up? Look up. Open your eyes. Chin down. Look up. There we go. There's one right here. The bags of the eyes. Yeah, look at that. Now we're, now we're talking. I'm looking pretty old now. You could also fill in the shadows here and here. And we're going to even make this a little bit more prominent. Good. We'll give her a little bit more eyebrow here. So that helps to define the eyes. And we'll make them a little scraggly too, because she's an old lady now. Okay, now, very important part. We're gonna take a different brush, and we're gonna take our highlight. Every time you add a shadow, you need to add a highlight. And we're going to make this line right under all the shadows for contrast. I'm going to highlight the nose because that's a, a really prominent bone in our face, right? Everything, every bone that protrudes, even just a little bit, gets a little highlight. And we'll blend that in a second. Now I want to make sure I highlight the cheekbones. That's another really prominent bone on the face. Chin. And we're going to give her, can you look up again? Chin down, look up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now we do a little blending. Okay. 
So it all blends in and looks natural. up. Good. Now I'm going to go over some of those shadows. And I'm going to blend upwards if it's a straight line. If it looks like a line, I'm going to blend a little bit. To make it look more like a shadow. Because shadows are not in lines. Shadows are kind of spread out, right? I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add the mouth line going down. And some cracks in the lips. Wow, Rosie, you've aged. I'm so old. <laughs> you know what I forgot? I forgot wrinkles in the forehead. Not quite old enough. Can't, can't forget the wrinkles in the forehead. Oh, no, we can't. No, we can't. Okay, can you squinch your forehead for, oh, that's pathetic. Can't you squinch more? There, look, raise your eyebrows. Yeah, there we go. You see those? You see those lines, everyone? Okay, we're gonna fill some of those in. Yeah, can you hold that? How long can you hold that for? We will see. <laughs> I don't have to fill in every single one, but I'm gonna try and get the, the big ones. And that's gonna make a huge difference. If you can't find them, make them up. Pretend you know where they should be. Okay, now we got to add the highlight. Always have to highlight. Okay, you can relax. And I think I'm actually going to make you look like you have a little bit of gray, gray hair. So we're going to use a little white on her eyebrows, just a touch. 
to make it look like it's gray hair because you'd probably be wearing a gray wig if you were doing old age character. So we want the eyebrows to match the gray wig, right? Let's take a look. Wow. wow. Oh, almost forgot one thing. I'm not going to do this completely fully, but I'm going to show you what you would do on the neck. Okay, you can't have a face that looks old and a neck that looks young. That wouldn't work unless you have a costume that comes up way high. You probably wouldn't have a costume that comes up way high. So you would have to do the neck. So like I said, I'm not going to do it all. I'm going to just do it on one side, but I'm going to show you. You could also pull the wrinkles down here on the neck. You would also want to fill in the clavicle and see how there's a shadow here. You want to emphasize that. You want to emphasize that. And you don't have to be so precise because this is far away. Your audience is far away. You're on a stage. You really want it to look like shadows and highlights. We'll just do it on this side, finish it on this side. And voila! The last thing we're going to do is we're going to powder. And how we powder is. You put a little bit of translucent powder on a puff, like so. And we're gonna put it all over. Rosie's face. And then, you take your brush and you'd lightly brush off the excess powder and that sets the makeup. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Rosie as an old lady. How you doing there? Bring me my prunes. <laughs> <laughs> you young whippersnapper. <laughs> Stay tuned, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do Lion. that you know how to create a face, we're going to work on a puppy dog, okay? If you were in The Wizard of Oz, for example, you might want to play Toto. Or if you were in your Good Man Charlie Brown, you might be playing Snoopy. So little dog faces can come in handy. Or you might just want to be a dog for Halloween. Okay, so this is a relatively simple plot, okay? So we're going to try and do what we see here on Rosie. So first we're going to take our black and we're going to start with the nose. <laughs> we're going to create a doggy nose on Miss Rosie here. Because doggies have a very distinct snout. Would you call it a snout or would you call it a nose? Um, I don't know. 
know. Either way. Yeah. And we're going to make it kind of wide. And then, of course, they come down like this. Hey, you already look like a doggy. Woof, woof. Now, are you a happy dog or a, a not happy dog? Happy dog. Because happy dogs' faces go up, lips go up. Not happy people, lips go down. So we're going to make Rosie a happy dog. The slight upturn. Yeah, we're looking good. I'm going to give her some whiskers. Some dots. You're a little bit of a spotted dog. Great. And maybe we give you some big spots too. Spots are fun. One big spot on the eye. We want to leave room for Rosie to be able to see out of her eye though. So make sure not to get makeup in the eye. Open. Oh yeah. Now we're getting there. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Now we do the tongue. Because you're a puppy dog and you've always got your tongue hanging out. Let's see if I can make you have a tongue here. It should be a little redder, but I don't have my deep red with me. But I think this will do. Mm -hmm. 
And one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline your other eye just to make sure it's prominent and that we see it. Actually, It's always a good idea in stage makeup to emphasize the eyes. So much acting is done with the eyes, right, Rosie? Mm-hmm. And look up. I like it. All we need is some doggy ears, and if you can go like that, And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Rosie as Toto in The Wizard of Oz. I hope you enjoyed our makeup tutorial today. Now go have some fun with makeup. showing you some stage makeup techniques. If you have any questions, you can contact me. Again, I'm Janet Lazarus. I'm the Producing Artistic Director at Sierra School of Performing Arts. You can contact us at sierraschoolofperformingarts.org. That's our website. And we do classes and camps for kids. We do shows, musicals at Bartley Ranch with adults and sometimes children. And we do youth productions with ages 8 through 18. So get on our mailing list, sierraschoolofperformingarts.org, and come see our shows at Bartley Ranch every August. Not this August, but next August, we're doing Annie. See you then. Be sure to check out Discover Alexander Caldermobiles if you haven't already. And now, a message from our sponsors. Discover the Arts is brought to you by Nevada Dairymen and Dairy Council of Nevada and Estelle J. Kelsey Foundation. Hi guys, welcome to the last day of the Discover the Arts workshops. Thank you so much for spending all of July with me. Today we are going to make an awesome mobile inspired by the great Alexander Calder. Do you remember when we did one of his sculptures? Well, he was also known for making these ginormous mobiles. You ready? So for this project, we are going to need six pipe cleaners, two sheets of construction paper, scissors, a ruler, pencil, glue, and then also clear tape. So push pause on that video, get all your supplies ready, and let's get started. Okay, so with both of your sheets of paper, you're going to want to fold it hamburger style. Hamburger style once again. And then hot dogs, or hamburger style, yep, once again. Now I already did that with my other sheet. So now we've got both of them, like this. Now we're going to want to cut horizontally, so it's the short way all the way on those creases, but do not cut this long crease. Some curvy shapes 
on these folded sheets just on one side. We're doing curvy shapes because we're trying to match Alexander Calder's style. So it can be loose hearts, it can be ovals, but we need at least eight of them. Alrighty, now we are going to cut out these shapes, making sure we get two of each shape, so keeping those folds nice and tight. So we're going to put these shapes to the side for a second. Now we need to prep our pipe cleaners. So we're going to need six different lengths of them, starting from a 12 inch pipe cleaner. So we don't need to cut that one. And then working our way down to a seven inch pipe cleaner. So we're going to cut off an inch for every single one. So 11. This next one's gonna be 10 inches. Next one's gonna be nine inches. Next one is, you guessed it, it's gonna be eight inches. And then the last one is going to be seven inches. Like so, okay. Once we've got all the pipe cleaners cut, we are then going to begin to bend them almost as if they were a rainbow. Starting from longest, going to shortest, like so. All right, now that everything's cut, we have all of our pieces, it's time to put our hard work to use and we're going to assemble the whole mobile. So, take one of your curvy shapes, put it at the shortest pipe cleaner, and tape it on, like that. Take the other part of that shape, add a little bit of glue, and then sandwich them together, that way they match up on both sides, and it hides that tape. We're gonna do the same thing on that next end. Like that. I'm gonna glue this on here to hide that tape at the end of the pipe cleaner. And we've got our first pipe cleaner. Now for the next six pipe cleaners, or sorry, five, we're only going to glue and tape a shape on one end.
right. Once all your shapes are attached to your pipe cleaners, you're gonna take the longest pipe cleaner and wrap it around the second longest right in the middle. And then you're gonna take the next longest and wrap that right in the middle too. And keep going until you've hit the end. All right, last step. We are going to tie a string at the very top. That's going to be the longest pipe cleaner. And we've got something to hang our mobile. Look how awesome those turned out. Thank you guys so much for participating in the Discover the Arts workshops. And hopefully I get to meet you in person next year. Goodbye, guys.